So let's get started. I know you guys are hyped. I'm hyped. Let's do this. Okay. Wait, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Wait, there we go. All right, nice. So hello, my name is Part Serene. I am currently working at Apple. I'm working on Siri, and I'm also studying mechatronics engineering at the University of Waterloo. Those are my socials. Feel free to add me. I will respond. Uh, I'm much more active on Twitter, so if you want to, you know, really, really get in the DMs with me, reach me there. Um, but I'm also available on LinkedIn for any kind of questions you have. I will also be on Discord right after this, um, answering any questions you have if we run out of time. Um, other than that, um, I'll give you a little brief into myself as well. Um, these are my past internships. I have worked at SAP right after high school. This is something I literally did in the summer after um, grade 12, so right before I got into university. And it was a great experience. I did some IoT hardware development there. Um, Ritual was my first internship. Did some really, really cool things there. It was QA as well as um, some manual scripting work and some just scripting and making thing, making processes faster. So that was really, really fun after that as well. Um, I got to work on natural language processing and you know a lot of tagging and a lot of data science and really diving deep into the math. And I know that that's not, you know, fun for all of you, but it was definitely an experience for me and I definitely enjoyed it a lot as well. So um, right after that, right after Deloitte, so my last internship was at Tesla where I was working on IoT distributed systems. And uh, currently I am at Apple where um, I am working on Siri. So all in all, every single one of these internships has been an amazing experience. And I am so, so excited to get you guys in on the little tips that I use personally and across all these internships I have gathered um, over years and years basically. And I'm hoping to get you guys the best, best tips possible. And really be able to get down to the answer of just network to get an internship. Before we go forward, I'm gonna take a little drink. So aside from school and aside from internships, I also like to be involved in the community. And so Augment is a platform on LinkedIn, which usually uh, we, we put out a lot of really, really great info on how to land internships. Um, overall, dive into a lot of the nitty gritty details. Um, we are on a little bit of a hiatus, but we have an awesome, awesome Medium page where we talk about so many really cool and really, really interesting things. And I highly recommend you check it out. This would be available on the Hack Pack. Um, aside from Augment, I also work as a technical product manager at Personify. Um, if you don't know what product management is, it's basically um, taking something which is a technical product and bringing it, bringing business requirements down to um, the engineering side and really making, putting things together from a high level. Um, that's like a TLDR. You can ask me more about it later on as well. Um, and then this is our agenda. So what are we really gonna cover today? Um, this is a very like kind of brief overview of what it is. So we have definitions of like different things I wanna be talking about. Um, you know, what the mindset you need to network timelines, messaging people, following up, and post networking steps. And finally, we'll get into the Q&A. So first off, definitions. Extremely, extremely important in the next little bit. I really want you guys to pay attention to this because it's going to be great. So we first need to define how we perceive an awesome internship, okay? So awesome, extremely impressive or daunting, inspiring great admiration, apprehension or fear, right? But we're going to look at awesome, like the extremely impressive kind, right? We want an internship to be really, really cool, uh, but awesome is often viewed as from like our own kind of perspective and our own lens. So how do we put this together with their internship, which is, you know, when a student or trainee wor works in an organization and they gain experience um, and they are mentored and they learn from other people, you know, internships are really meant for you to be able to explore a field and be able to, you know, give you that really, really great experience that you've been really wanting and really testing the waters out. You know, school can only take you that far. And personally, I have almost never focused on grades. I've always been very, very focused on how can I, you know, do my internships better? How can I land a better internship? How can I gain the most experience possible? And so priorities matter 
but so do how you view an internship. So how do you really define an awesome internship? Personally, this is something I also have struggled with a lot. You know, when you're initially kind of coming into university, you hear this kind of uh, paradigm of Calier bust. And I have been on the other side of Calier bust too. I have done it myself. I have also busted very, or come very close to busting and, you know, not made it. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have to understand what is it that you want out of an internship? Do you want the big name? Do you want some really, really awesome experience where you're, you know, diving deep into um, the engineering side of things, the design side of things, or do you want a lot of control over the products you build? So for example, if you're working at a bigger company, there's a less of a chance that you'll get to dive into a very, very specific, there's less of a chance that you will get to make a very big impact. There's a, there's a high chance you'll take a very, very small piece and perfect it so it fits really well within this huge, huge puzzle. And that's the difference between working at a startup versus a bigger company. You know, we have Fang, we have Tesla, so many big companies that we want to all work for. But really, I want you to kind of understand what you want to work at and what you want to push for and what you want out of an internship. So once you set these different goals, it becomes networking becomes a breeze. We know what we want, and so we're able to push ahead in the right direction. So what are even the benefits of networking? You know, like, why, why can't I just apply online? Why do I have to do all this work? It's not so extra. You know, that doesn't really sound very, very fun, to be honest. So, so how do we get into it? So I think networking is extremely important. You know, I had initially mentioned that I worked at SAP um, right out of high school. And you're like, you know, how the heck did this guy do that? And my answer to that would be networking. Now, the question is, you know, I keep saying networking, networking, networking. It's in the title of this workshop. I've probably been rambling about it for the last 10 minutes. But, you know, what, like, why, why is it even good? So first off, you don't always have to network with people who are, you know, kind of already in the field. You can, you can meet like-minded people. You can find new opportunities, such as these internships that I'm mentioning. And you can explore new fields, gain better people skills by talking to more people. So let's say after this workshop, you message me and you're, you're like, hey, Park, you know, let's get on a call sometime. I'd love to learn more about you, do more things, whatever it may be. Um, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that, but just kind of prefacing it. Um, you you can reach out to me or you learn from other people who are like you, but then you also reach out to people who know more than you and so that you can learn from them. And that is how I've been able to also take all this knowledge and learn. And so even SAP, um, I was in this program in high school called Junior Achievement. So this, guys, if you're in high school, keep your, eye, uh, keep your ears open for this part. Um, so I was part of this thing called Junior Achievement where you get to start your own company. Um, under other bigger companies. And so I was under SAP at the time. And I built some really great, you know, uh, connections there. And this was just by, you know, meeting people in real life, um, RIP pre-corona days. Um, but uh, you, I was able to build like a proper relationship with a lot, a lot of these people and then, you know, initiated a conversation for how can we go about creating an internship for me? And that is, if I had not done that program, if I had not made those connections and networked really with the group of people and my mentors, I would not have been able to get this internship, which really kind of propelled my career a little bit. So what is the mindset that you really need to be successful in growing your network? And what do you need? What, what kind of mindset do you need overall when you're networking? So I think that if this is really, really important because your mindset is really going to control how you approach networking, how you approach people. So as I say, don't connect with people for the sole purpose of internships. While at some points it's going to be true and you will need to you know, reach out to people because you want an internship, you also want to be able to reach out to people to gain a better understanding of the industry. You understand they, they're also human. They're people like you. You want to be able to message them and be able to understand you know, how can I make myself better to be able to get an internship? Um, on many, many platforms, um, such as LinkedIn, uh, you or Twitter, whatever kind of pl social media platform you're on, you'll like often see people with a lot of really, really cool internships. And you're like, wow, you know, why does this person have an internship and not me? I would say in that, in that, 
in that moment, think about how you can make yourself better rather than, you know, trying to bash someone else or trying to be like, why does this person have something and not me? And having that kind of positive mindset intrinsically and building that out is going to help you go really, really far. And so um, for me, the reason I have put these kind of different um, names on there is because I had interviewed for IBM and TD, actually, as well as Tesla in first year, literally like four months out of high school. And I made it to the last round of Tesla. I did really well on my IBM interview. I did well on my TD interview. Every single interview, you know, I came out of that, I was like, heck yeah, I got this job, right? And this was the first time I was doing my interview. So definitely, I, I was definitely like overthinking it and being like, yep, yeah, definitely killed it. Awesome job, Parth, good job. Um, but what that really, and then when I didn't get any offer from those companies other than Ritual, I was like, damn it, how, how, like, how did this happen, you know? So I did a post-mortem and really thought about my kind of mindset that I had. And I realized that it wasn't great. It was extremely kind of toxic in the manner where you are pushing yourself to the extent and you only care about these names and you're not building any real skills. And so changing that mindset, thinking about how can I become better at what I do, allowed me to go further down the road. So timelines are also an extremely important thing when it comes to recruiting. And this is something not, not a lot of people will cover. And so I really want to get and dive into this a little bit. Give me one second. So timelines are crucial, crucial. If you don't understand timelines, it will be a hard time for you to be getting a job. You know, often at times, nobody else will tell you, oh, you know, you should apply to X, Y, Z job. It's something that you have to do. And so because of that, you need to be aware of when the different timelines are. And that's exactly what this is for. You can even take a screenshot of the slide if you really like. Um, I believe it will be given out. Um, and I'll also be able to share the slides post, um, post this presentation. Um, so for summer internships, they start in September of the year prior. So let's say for summer 2021, the applications had opened up in fall of 2020. Now you're like, well, what the heck? You know, I don't know this. It is okay. You, the applications are still open. However, you do have an advantage the earlier you apply. Um, I have a bunch and bunch of recruiter friends um, that I made through Augment and the, the consensus I've heard throughout is, you know, sometimes, yeah, it won't matter if you apply late, but most of the times if you're applying early and you have a strong resume, there's a higher chance you will be getting an interview because Think about it from the company's perspective. If they can find a person who fits fits what they want um, earlier down the road, they don't have to kind of wait for new candidates to come and they can just you know hire. Um, timelines do vary per company, um, but in my opinion, if you start reaching out just a little bit before uh, September, start building these different relationships. Um, when I say you know start reaching out, I'm referring to using platforms such as LinkedIn or Twitter, um, reaching out to these people and, you know, getting an idea of what this industry is like, what the open positions are like, or the positions which will be opening, understanding when these positions will, positions will be opening, and then, you know, falling back up again. For fall and winter internships, um, the applications for fall often open up in May. For winter, they open up in August or September. And similar idea, we're going to start reaching out, you know, about a month prior to each, so um, a month before September, um, a month before May, you will be able to kind of get an idea and gauge where you need to be at. So messaging people, I've said, you know, message these people, do this, do that, but what does that really entail? Um, and let's, let's dive down into it. So um, the platforms to use, as I mentioned earlier, um, LinkedIn and Twitter are great. Um, LinkedIn for finding and connecting with others is awesome. Now, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but LinkedIn is not, LinkedIn is a great platform. Um, every platform has its ups and downs. Um, and in my opinion, you don't have to be living on LinkedIn to be able to make use of the platform, right? You don't have to spend hours on end on LinkedIn, liking posts and doing all these different things. If you want to network and use LinkedIn for networking, that's all you need to do. Content creation on LinkedIn is a plus point and it can help you, but it's not necessary in my eyes. All you need to do sometimes is message and that's it, right? Same thing with Twitter. You don't necessarily need to be tweeting a lot of things, but if you are you know, creating this relationship with other people in your network, 
or with your followers, you are gaining a better understanding of other, not only other people, but also different industries. Um, and for Medium, I recommend content creation. Medium is a platform or Medium or any other platform as well is fine. Um, but Medium does have great search engine optimization. So if people do search for you, you could literally search my name uh, on Google and I believe you will find my Medium as well. And so you don't have to put in a lot of effort to make sure that your posts come up on Google if a recruiter does search your name, right? Um, now, if you looked a little bit to the right, I have my message right there. Um, that was just something I posted. That is exact. That was my first message um, to someone at Tesla who got me the position I worked at. And so, if you see, like I, the, the message can be framed a little bit better. Um, I have gotten a little bit smarter since then, but it is still mo most of the message is pretty crisp, and you can kind of take ideas from this. I will be diving a little bit deeper into it, but this is something that you can. Do, and LinkedIn does land jobs. Um, for me, for my first role at SAP, I use LinkedIn. Um, for Deloitte, I maintained and built relationships um, through LinkedIn, and that's how I got my interview. And same thing for Tesla, and similar-ish for Apple um, as well. And so it does work. Um, I have a lot of friends who it's worked for, and um, anecdotally speaking as well, this is kind of an idea that nobody will, will really kind of just give to you in a nice wrapped up presentation. So uh, make sure you're paying attention to the framework that I'm about to pull up. So messaging people is extremely important, but you know, who the heck do you message? So I've kind of broken it down into four categories and this is something I've learned over, over time. And this is something I've kind of picked up um, over the last like four years of networking and having LinkedIn. I think it's almost five years now, but that's, yeah, that's the idea. Um, so first off, you know, we have your bed and butter recruiters. Your recruiters are going to be um, a very big point for you to reach out to, and they often will be able to, you know, help you um, fast track your process and be able to come up with different people to reach out to or just, you know, get you an interview. So very much possible. I would highly recommend reaching out to people um, who are specific recruiters and specifically undergraduate recruiters. For internships, you need to make sure you're reaching out to the right people. Um, let's say you are a hardware engineer and you want to gain a hardware job. You should be reaching out to recruiters who are in that field and who work on the hardware team. Um, recruiters are often broken down into different kind of spaces. And so identifying who you want, who you need to reach out to is going to be very, very helpful. So other than recruiters, this is, this is an undervalued group, in my opinion. Students are extremely, extremely undervalued. And when I say students, I mean you know people who do have internships and who do not have internships. Oftentimes, the people who are working, um, for example, me, um, I, I have access to both portals um, or have had access. And usually, interns do have access to uh, company portals from internal. What that means is that they can give you referrals if they'd like. And what that also means is they can put you in touch with their manager. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. So let's say you want to work on the hardware team at Google, for example, you could reach out to an intern who is on the hardware team at Google. And you know, if you build a great connection with them, you can ask for either a referral or you can you know, get referred to the manager. And if, you build, if you're able to build a relationship with the hiring manager or the manager, your journey to be landing that offer is going to be a lot better or getting that interview, right? The first goal is to get that interview. So that's the kind of ideas you need to be able to generate in order to reach out to these people. Um, next would be full-time roles. So let's say you are a product designer um, and you want to work at Facebook. You reach out to people who are product designers at Facebook. Um, and you say, hey, I'm really interested in XYZ position, if there are open positions on um, their website, and you say, you know, I'd love to get on a call sometime and learn more about you, what you do, and how I can be a better fit for this company or for this role. Um, and finally, hiring managers are another great resource that you can target in order to be able to generate um, who you want to talk to and these are the people who can also just directly give you interviews and give you offers as well. So another great group of people you want to be able to build connections with. So what to message? Um, the general guidelines that say is, you know, introduce yourself, name, major, um, 
interests if you're in high school. I know we have a few people from high school here. So, you know, like let's say you're interested in, you're applying for a design job um, and you really, really like 3D printing. You can talk about 3D printing a little bit in your little intro message. Um, and you want to also state a goal for the connection, you know, like why do you want to reach out to this person? Um, do you want to meet over a video call? And then another idea that you can think about is how you can provide value as a student. So this goes a little bit less for people who are at Waterloo because we have very, very tight connections with um, a lot of these different companies. But to go to a school with less of a brand name, perhaps, you can really, I know that doesn't sound like an advantage, but it can be if you use it the right way. Um, if you message a recruiter and be like, hey, I know there isn't a lot of X company presence at my school, I'd love to be able to you know, generate that presence. Um, how can I go about helping you? So you as a student, if you are involved in your school, you're able to also provide value back to these people and back to the recruiters who will be able to kind of, you know, also provide you value. And if you are able to become friends with the recru recruiter, then different things and the different ideas you learn and you learn how a company works on the back end side is extremely crucial. And the number of things you will learn is also great. So these are the kind of connections you want to be forming. Um, so I have kind of had a follow up and a connection message for recruiters. So a connect connection message for a non recruiter would be, hey, I am currently studying this degree at this university and I'm really interested in working whatever company you want to work at as this position would love to connect and chat that that like would love to connect and chat is kind of my staple um you can feel free to like move it around and you know do different things with it but the initial connection message um doesn't need to be like this full-on paragraph because you just want to give a little brief right um and you want the other person to accept your connection and if you're just sending connections on LinkedIn or if you're you know, just following people on Twitter without actually executing upon it, you're not going to be able to get anywhere. And a lot of people will not even accept your LinkedIn request if you do not have a message around it. Um, I do also do not accept a lot of LinkedIn requests if I do not know the person. If I uh, don't know the person, but they have a message written down, I will most likely accept it. And so that's not just me that's a lot of the people in the industry and that's the thinking behind it too because the connections that you want to create want to be meaningful you should be meaningful um, a follow-up message so let's say one person has um you know connected with you what do you say but they didn't respond so what do you say so you'd say you know thanks for connecting i have a few few questions that i'd like to ask about whatever company and i would love to jump on a call if possible um at this time you want to be able to get that kind of final input and be able to get in touch with these people immediately and be able to say, okay, this is, you know, this is when I'm free. I'd love to be able to get on a call. Also, if you are able to get someone on a call, the relationship that you're going to build is so much more meaningful. You're going to be able to talk not just about work, but, you know, about your hobbies, about kind of what things you're interested in. It doesn't always have to be, you know, internships, internships, internships. You can diversify what you talk about. You can aim to create a genuine relationship with the person. So let's say, let's say if you and I were to get on a call, our entire conversation should not just be about internships or it shouldn't just be about how can you make your LinkedIn profile better or whatever it may be. You want to be able to get on a call with someone, have a normal conversation. I think that's what's really going to be able to separate, you know, the people who are just messaging people for internships versus you now who are going to message people to generate this connection, which you can use over a long time, not just use, be able to like actually become friends with a person. And I can't tell you the number of people I've met over LinkedIn, over Twitter, that I've just gotten on calls with, and they've just been the most awesome people, um, full times, other interns, um, managers that have you know connected with and really built a great relationship with. And that is thanks to the social media, which makes this possible. And if you use it in the right way, you build a very genuine network which not only are able to support you, but eventually you will also be able to support other people. And let's say you are able to, you know, rise up the ranks and, you know, you, let's say you become CEO of this great, great company. Your network also wants to connect with you, the people who you are reaching out to, because you are also going to be an asset eventually. So when people connect with you, you need to be able to show potential, especially if you don't have a lot of experience now. If you can show potential in your work, if you can show potential when in your conversation, that is also going to help you build and maintain this converse, uh, build and maintain this relationship over time. Also, I know I'm like speaking extremely fast, so if you want me to slow down a little bit, we have we have some decent time. Um, let me know. I'm going to take a quick break, um, drink some water, stay hydrated, fellows.
and then continue. Um, I'm also like looking at the chat. So let's say if you want me to slow down or speed up, I don't know if you want me to do that, but um, just put it down as well. So next up, we have continuation of watch message. So Anastasia is a great friend of mine. She is um, an internship program, a recruiter at Tesla. Um, and she had this really, really great post up um, from a while back. Water is very important. Make sure to have those eight glasses per day. Yeah, for, agreed, 100%. Um, anyways, this entire kind of post um, is extremely great. I've put it on the hack pack. I believe if I haven't messaged me on Discord, um, I, like I'll be on there right after the call, uh, after this presentation, and I'll be able to drop all this information for you all. Um, and so, you know, messaging recruiters specifically can be very terrifying, um, and it's, like especially when you don't get a response. I believe I had this on an earlier slide, but I might not have mentioned it explicitly. But when you're on LinkedIn, it's very easy to get discouraged, especially when people are not responding to your messages, right? You're like damn it, man, I've you know, reached out to 100 people and I've not gotten a single message. Yeah, that, that is common. While you know, maybe 100 is a little too much and that might be a little bit of a hyperbole, you will have to reach out to a lot of people before you start getting a response. I have tried to make it as simple as possible for you all with this really clean template that you can use. Um, and it's a template that has worked for me, has worked for many, many of my friends um, and being able to get a response and, and being able to follow up. And so Anastasia kind of really also sums up a great way about this. Um, and so in my opinion, you reach out to a lot of people, you know, you'll know, you get maybe two responses for every 100 people you reach out to. And so that doesn't sound like a lot, but really all you need to make work is one. And if you can make one work, you'll be fine, right? And so I'm just gonna kind of go over Anastasia's post out here. So you know, before messaging recruiters, do your research and apply to the internship before you talk to a recruiter on the company's career portal, 100% agreed. Um, you want to be able to create that, just, just apply online before you reach out to the recruiter. It's going to make their life so much easier because all they have to do is go on their portal, click on you, and then search you for the interview, rather than tell you to apply and make this long, windy process, okay? Next, um, you should include all the relevant information. I personally have been, uh, I used to, not be good at this because Waterloo is a fiber program. I was like, I have good experience, but you know, people might think I'm young and so they might not give me an interview, which has happened before. Um, they're especially at like quant firms, they will just just be like, Oh, are you graduating next year? No, cool. We will interview you next year then. Um, so it, it's it's definitely like a downside, but it is also very necessary when you're reaching out to recruiters to be able to provide this information for them. Um, you should also spell the recruiter's name properly, agreed, um, use the appropriate pronouns or do not use pronouns if you are, if you're not sure. Um, and you know, she has this great kind of, um, well, little, little template. I have a great template up here as well. I'm just going to read it out and highlight some important bits. So currently studying XYZ with a graduation date of, um, the date, and then we're going to say, you know, you're looking for, what are you looking for? Internship, co-op, part-time, full-time. Um, at this company. And then, you know, you next in the next line, you want to immediately say you've already applied for XYZ role. And then you give a little tidbit on why you'd be a good fit for the company. So for example, you know, let's say I'm reaching out to a company. I have done extensive work in machine learning, uh, specifically natural language processing, as well as software engineering and distributed systems. So I would make sure to highlight those things, especially since there are something that not a lot of people do. So I try and identify what makes you unique and what makes your skills unique, whether it be design, product, engineering, business, whatever it is, you know, how can you stand out to a recruiter? Because a recruiter will get thousands of messages a day. So why should they give their time to you? That's something you need to think about. If you can think about how you can empathize with the people you're messaging and what they want to read, and you can really put yourself in their shoes, you'll be able to create and craft the perfect message. So next up, you know, following up, what do we, what should you do after getting a response? So there's a few things you should do. Let's say, you know, have a little back, bit of a back and forth. Um, you want to ask for a coffee chat. You want to have that kind of end result, uh, end goal in sight. Um, have a normal conversation. As I mentioned earlier, you know, if you get on a coffee chat, you don't want to be like, 
oh, you know, this is my resume, this is what I'm doing, like, that is very, very generic. How, how do you show your own personality and build that great connection, right? You want to build a genuine connection with these people you're talking to, because at the end of the day, they're all human. We all crave genuine human connection, especially during COVID times. And so how do you, you know, get on a Zoom call, but then actually make use of the other person's time in an appropriate manner? So yes, you, know, you want to get down to the questions that you have, but then also be able to understand how you are going to provide them value with um, their time. And it shouldn't always be take, take, take. How are you going to also get that? That is something I can't answer for you. That's something you have to kind of figure out yourself. Um, and it is okay if you know you have to do a lot of trial and error, um, but I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out as you are you know, getting on calls with these different people. A very great question I like to ask is how you can become an ideal candidate. Okay, so what you're going to do, so let's listen up very, very closely for this one. So let's say you get on a coffee chat, okay? You get on a coffee chat with five different people. So I'm gonna take um, the engineering, engineering perspective on this. So let's say you are um, talking to five different people in the next week and they're all about, you know, at different companies. Let, let's just say at Fang, every single one of them. And you want to understand, you know, how can you become an ideal candidate for their team? So often, often at times, you know, every single one of these people will tell you, oh, okay, you know, you have some pretty good skills, but we'd really like to see X, Y, Z technology or X, Y, Z, you know, projects. And what you're going to find is the more people we talk to, you're going to find patterns, okay? And what that means is they will tell you similar things to work on. So what you're going to do from an engineering mindset is maximize your output and minimize your input, okay? You're going to build maybe one or two projects, but they will touch upon every single thing that these different people have told you. And you're going to go back to these people and follow up with them and then be like, hey, I have you know worked on these different things that you told me to work on. I think I'd be a pretty good fit. I'm familiar with these different technologies. How you know can we uh, get a referral process started? Or how can we, you know, are there any internships open? And usually when you ask a full-time person or an intern, um, are any internships open? They do also get the hint that uh, you are trying to gain um, a good connection for referral, or if you know they can help you out in any other way possible. So these are the different kind of things you need to think about. You know, how can you really maximize your output with this minimum input, but then also be smart about it and be smart about how you build your projects and whether it's a design portfolio, whether it's engineering, whether it's business. How can you stand out, but also be able to tailor it to every single person um, that you've built a connection with. And those are the ideas you need to be thinking about. So also follow up closer to when applications open, 100%, you know, you would want to just, it doesn't have to be a very long message. You can see at the bottom right, I have, hey, was wondering if we could chat sometime. I've also like blocked the names off because um, yeah, I don't want to show people's names, but um, you can, it doesn't need to be a very long winded message. You know, you do end up being in the middle of um, having a sort of casual-ish relationship casual professional relationship, if that makes sense. So you don't have to always be like ma'am or sir, and you don't have to assume you can be on a little bit more coll colloquial terms with them. So I think that is extremely important and being able to build that relationship is extremely important. Um, do not say what's up or how's it going. You have to gauge with the person. It changes person to person, do not open up with that. You don't need to be extremely professional or you don't need to be um, extremely like casual either. You have to find a good balance between the two. So post networking steps, I've talked about, you know, how do you reach out to these people, but how do you maintain your connections and kind of what are these different things that you want to maintain? So some of the main steps to take is, you know, execute on this advice that you have been given. So let's say you meet with a product manager. This product manager tells you, hey, you know, I would love for you to learn more about how do you set great KPIs and OKRs. And for a lot of you, these might just be some random words and magic words, and it doesn't matter. I'm just giving an example of, you know, they're just telling you to work on X, Y, Z. And I've, if they told you to work on these different things, when you reach back out to them, don't make them feel like they wasted their time if you didn't work on something. So how do you really show them that you know you really took their advice because that's only going to strengthen this relationship? Um, follow up to when the internship openings are closer. 
Um, holiday messages are great for main contacts. So, you know, just like happy holidays or um, I've even done happy summer in the past. I do not recommend, but it has worked in certain cases. Um, but like also just, you know, chats and check-ins after a few months, I'd say like three to four months is a good range where you want to check back in with your different connections, especially if, you know, you had built a great relationship with them. How do you just, you know, kind of check back in and talk to them about different things. Um, and really like, you want the people to who you reach out to eventually become your friends. If you have that mindset, you'll be able to not only take your network further down the road, but also be able to gain the most out of it. I know you all are putting up some questions. And so perfect timing. We are at the Q&A Q &A section um, and we have 20 minutes left. So there's a bunch of time. Um, I can go deeper into my past experiences. Um, of course, not talking too much in depth with what I've done, but overall, especially in terms of internships. But I do have a few questions up here. So I'm going to take a little bit of a water break. I recommend you all do the same. Um, but then I'll be getting and diving into these different questions. How willing did you find people were to give you referrals? Very great question, Janice. Um, refer a referral isn't something you know you immediately ask for. You want to be able to build a connection and build a relationship um, while, when you're doing these things. So that in your opening message, follow my template. Do not ask for a referral. I have been getting hundreds of messages in the past like few weeks after I have started at Apple, um, and some of them are like, "Hey, Parth, you know, can you can you refer me to Apple? We have a few mutual connections." And I was like. Uh -huh, that is not how this works. You know, I don't even know you, so why would I take the chance on you to refer you? Because when someone is referring you, they are saying, hey, this person would be a great fit for our company, and they will be an asset. If they do not believe that, and they're basically putting you up on a pedestal, and they're holding this pedestal up. So if they are giving the company their word that this person will be performing well, and you end up not performing well, that looks bad on their part. So they have, so this referral process actually means something when you're putting someone else's word forward and someone else's application forward. So do not ask this in the first little portion, but to dive deeper into, you know, how did I, how did I personally find people who were willing to give me referrals? Um, I built relationships. So everything I talked about in this presentation on how you reach out to people, what I worked on. So for example, um, with a company I worked at, um, I had initially met this person at a conference and I had maintained my relationship by, you know, getting on calls or just kind of giving them different updates on what I've been talking about, understanding what different things I should be working on, working on those things and reaching back out and being like, Hey, you know, I've worked on every single thing you've told me to do. And I think I've, I'd be a good fit. Um, is there a chance that, you know, I'd be able to get a referral? So asking for that because it's a it's a slightly more sensitive ask right it's like you don't just go up to anyone and ask for a referral you have to be able to build and maintain that relationship a little bit first okay um we can dive a little bit deeper into it if you'd like um but in terms of how willing they were um once i had built up a relationship with them and executed on that they were quite willing however you know if you ask people and i've made this mistake earlier too hey do we have any open internships sometimes that'll work or sometimes that won't work um, but they're also kind of giving you um, their backing when they are referring you to their email, uh, for their internal email, for internships, or whatever it may be. All right. Um, Janice, I hope I've answered that well. If you have more kind of deeper question, please feel free to post it. We have Mahek next. What are your tips for networking and getting internships in high school? So high school is tough. Um, and this, I am not a big fan of unpaid internships. I feel everybody should be fairly compensated for the work that they do. However, since you're living at home, you don't really have a lot of expenses at this time. You're not a broke college student. Um, you can afford to work um, part-time off uh, part-time or for free. Oftentimes, if you cannot, do not settle for free. If you need the money, you know, make sure you get there and you get the money because that is also very important. But um, overall, at the end of the day, um, I'd say that when you're reaching out to people, you know, same idea, use, use the same templates I've given you, but also stress on the fact that, hey, you know, I'd love to take tackle some of your backlog tasks. So if you're, let's say, in software engineering and you want a CS type of job or interested in software engineering and you want a CS type of job, you uh, reach out to the same people, as I mentioned earlier, and say, hey, I'm a high school student. I'd love to, you know, 
learn if there are any um, internship openings. You can apply for the paid ones, but you can also be like, hey, like I can literally just work through my school's co-op system, um, which a lot of high schools do have, and then also say, I'd love to take a look at the backlog and be able to tackle some intern side project. Right? Because if they don't have to mentor you a lot, if they don't have to drive a lot of resources to you, um, and you kind of can just work on your own, but work in the team, that's also important. And the more you work with alone in the company, in the environment that will kind of, you know, you'd be working in full time, you also pick up a lot of things. So I think that's a great way to gain experience. Um, we have another question. In addition to that, which age do you think would be a good time to start networking? Literally whenever, I don't think there's a good age for it. Um, I've been doing it since I was 16, I'd like to say. Yeah, 16. Um, and I'm 20 now, so it's been about four years. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the overall. I don't, I don't think there's a right age for it. If you're 30, you can start networking today. If you're 25, you can start networking today. If you're 10, you can start networking today. There is no gap in my opinion. Um, we have another question. Um, how willing are recruiters and our employees to refer someone they met online? Well, buddy. Everything is on COVID, right? like through COVID, it is a lot more likely now than it was before. But usually recruiters live on the platform of LinkedIn. And so if you're reaching out to them, there's a very good chance that they will reach back to you. They might not, but they are also super busy people. Um, they will be, in terms of like how willing they are to refer, I answered this in my previous question. Recruiters is a little bit different. Recruiters will are very like to the point because, because of the sheer number of people they have to kind of um, deal with and be able to give feedback to, you would just be able to, um, you, you'd only get very concise responses. And so they have a very, very tight recruiter lens on it. You're not building a very, very clear relationship up with them. It's more transactional. With your other relationships, you want to have a more like personal approach to it. Um, Siddhant asks, do you have any advice on what worked on making a resume stand out? Um, also, what would you say makes the side project stand out? What would you say users or how technically complex is this? This is in regards to software engineering. I'm actually just going to go to my next slide as well because I have some resume tips here. I knew I was going to be getting this question and I also have um, Augments Medium which I think would be a great resource as well. So feel free to check those out later. This should also be in your half hat. Um, and if it's not, message me after this presentation. Um, I'm also keeping track on time. So I think for a resume standout, um, it's really like following this guide, making it easy to read, very, very important. Having a concise way for a recruiter to be able to skin, skim your resume in 10 seconds or under is very great. So that would be, that's something that you want. Um, and in terms of, you know, what would make a side project really stand out, I think, you know, it doesn't need to be the most technically complex. Often at times, a company will see, especially like Fang and bigger companies, what they'll see is, you know, do you know how to program? Cool. And then they'll shove you in this big system of, you know, doing technical interviews. And that's what really, really tests you of like knowing your data structures and algorithms kind of stuff. Um, but other than that, in terms of making your project stand out, it's not having necessarily, um, you know, big projects or, you know, where you've had users. Having users is 100% very impressive. Technologies, I'd say having users and building a real product is always better than, you know, having a side project that you worked on. Um, so definitely think about that. Um, overall, I'd say um, is in terms of if you're applying for the bigger companies like Fang, you will be able to. Um, and when I say Fang, sorry, I realize some people might not know. Fang is Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. Um, sometimes they've started shoving Tesla in there too now. Um, but that's like big name company is basically what I'm referring to. Um, and what that means is they will often only care about, you know, your general kind of software engineering knowledge. Whereas startups, let's say you're very, very passionate about applying to startups and working at startups, making sure that you are able to um, if you have a tighter fit with their stack, you will have a much better chance of getting an interview because you know they just see, hey, this person can jump on and just start writing code. And that's what pretty much every startup wants. Um, if you can minimize the onboarding time, that is exactly what they're looking for. Um, let me take another quick water break. So do you have any advice on what worked on making your 
Oh, I just read that one. So Jacob, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, asks, okay, I'm a first year student with previous experience. I've applied to many fan companies, but I haven't heard back from any. How do you deal with that? What should I change? Well, um, this kind of goes back to the mindset. I know first years you come in, you're like, I'm, I am, I am the best. And I personally also got humbled very, very often um, coming into a university with um, previous experience and Fang will usually, or like any big name company will usually want people with more experience. So, you know, having more than one internship down on your resume, having great, great coding experiences and being able to really portray that through your resume is extremely important. And so what that would mean and what that would look like is let's say you've had, you know, two internships in the past, you're in third year, and then you apply for FANG or set, like end of second year, you apply for FANG, like the much higher chance of getting it. But before then, if you're first year, chances are just less because if from a, again, think from a company's perspective, they want to hire you and they hire interns so that it becomes very easy to hire for full time. And so all they need to do is, you know, maybe they have some, they have a shorter process for returns, return offers for full-time, but let's say someone is applying for full-time roles completely externally, it does not help. So having internships at companies you want, extremely important. If you are first year, you have a little bit of time, but make sure you have that in your goal. So coming into University of Waterloo, literally I only had two companies in mind. One of, my first one was Tesla and my second one was Apple. Both of them were really equal to me and I wanted to work at both. And so every single thing I did was in order to get to that end goal. Um, you mean asks, hey, part of not working in Waterloo works. What did you find, which did you find help you land your previous internships the most? Oh, I see. Hmm. So Apple Tesla was all external. Um, I had another offer which was external, but they sent it through Waterloo works. Delight was external really, but they also sent it through Waterloo Works. So really I've been an external person since since I can remember, aside from my first internship. Um, Madhav asks, what advice do you have for people seeking engineering internships when they don't go to brand name schools like Waterloo U of T? Well, your school isn't all important in my opinion, right? Your, what your school does help you do is, you know, surround yourself with people who are smart. So like with, I live with four other people, every single one of these four people, um, are like extremely great friends of mine and they are super freaking smart. And because they're so smart, I also like start absorbing these things. And so you, you're you able to um, understand and you know you better yourself, but it's not necessarily that you have to go to Waterloo or UFT to be able to end software engineering internships. Um, I have a lot of friends at U Ottawa, at other different schools, um, I believe even Carleton and I'm like losing names from the top of my head, but literally every Canadian university, I have friends um, who have, you know, big name company internships, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, literally you name it. Um, so it doesn't necessarily matter. It's it's about you and how you set your goals and how many projects you have if you're able to gain internship experience, et cetera, and so forth. Could you speak a little bit about resume and template appearance? Um, I have put up that link that should be answering most of your questions. Um, I am pretty sure it is illegal to do an internship without pay in Canada. It is, um, unless you're doing it through a co-op co program. So if you're in high school, you should be able to do it through, especially like I know for TDSB, from the school board, you should be able to do it. Um, it does vary uh, depending on where you are located. What do recruiters want to see in a project portfolio? What do they not care about in a portfolio? Um, I'm assuming this is what's in regards to software engineering. Um, if it is in regards to software engineering, it it really varies. Um, if you're applying to startups, as I mentioned earlier, it is more, they want to see more of a fit with their company. Um, but if you're applying to like big name companies, they want to see engineering uh, adeptness and like how you could, how good you are. How, oh God, how good of an engineering background you have. Um, Hillary says, you mentioned creating genuine connections, but how can connections feel genuine if both parties know the ultimate goal is to land an internship or gain some kind of benefit? So really that, that's when i say you know you want to become kind of friends with these people you don't want to be able to talk about things other than internships and aside from thinking you know i'm basically only talking to this person for um lending internship i think is is not the best mindset and that's that's what i mentioned earlier as well and like when you're reaching out to people you want to yes you know your initial goal is okay i'm going to reach out to this person um, possibly get an internship eventually, but I also want to learn more about the industry. Having different goals aside from this, like landing an internship, 
is also extremely important and they actually help you land an internship and that's how you create genuine um, connections by having other things and other goals and having this kind of um, two-way interaction which helps both parties so you know your conversation can also help the people you're talking to but how do you make that happen and that's something you need to figure out because it's very very personal it's very unique so what is something about you that another person would want to listen about and how can you take what they say and improve upon it and make yourself better since you went to waterloo i go to waterloo um how much did you how much did external applications help compared to um waterloo works um i like as I mentioned earlier, I've like mostly done external really in the past a little bit. Um, Wild Works is great for your first year, maybe maybe your first, I think two or three internships, and then afterwards external for especially for big name companies become really really clutch. Um, what should I try to get out of initial conversation with recruiters? Um, so the chance of you getting on a call with recruiters is lower because recruiters do not have time. But if you do get on a call with recruiters, you know, try to understand how you can help them or bring them more to you in school if they can, if you can forward people um, to them if they're a good fit. Being able to kind of help them out in any way, shape, or form is great. We have a few more questions. Oh boy, I'm gonna go a little bit fast. Um, apart from J Canada, what are some tips for high school students to get an internship? You mentioned providing value for these tech companies, maybe think of Google publishing. Hundred percent. That is also providing value to these big companies, Microsoft and AWS, as well as LinkedIn, all have like their own kind of university programs, but I'm sure they will also be able to, um, especially if you're like a dedicated high school student, you can also reach out to them and be able to create that connection and be like, hey, you know, I'm trying to start something Google related in my school. How can I make this happen? And then immediately you're building this connection for yourself with them. Um, when you reach out to someone for something, you would usually want to reciprocate that help. Agreed. Have you offered help before and how can other students do the same? That is a great question. I personally like this kind of stuff. So um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, just a little bit of was like Augment. And so this Augment is like this platform on LinkedIn that I was running last summer. Um, and we would literally do live sessions like this and do uh, and, and basically, you know, get on live. So and I actually have a live on LinkedIn um, recorded. Um, where Anastasia, the recruiter I showed earlier, as well as my friend Neil, um, got on a call and we target we like talk about different misconceptions um, people face during recruiting and like how can you make yourself stand out. So highly recommend checking that out as well. Um, we also have around three more minutes. Um, other students, so let's say you have a big name internship, or let's say you have you know gone through this process similar to me. I highly recommend mentoring because you are able to see the next generation of people who are going to be in the same position you are in now but maybe a year or two down the road so you know really kind of shaping them and helping them get to their goals and reach their goals especially if you have this knowledge is is very fulfilling um i personally do it because i just really enjoy it but you don't have to like get too crazy with it you don't have to be taking calls every single day trying to help people right you, you just want to do it um here and there and try to be able to give back to the community in some ways so you can either do it you know personally like doing one-on-ones you can do chats exactly like this one or presentations um you can also do like group chats and talk to different people and spread your knowledge um, in different ways um how does networking change for research positions that industry pull-ups very great um, research positions, the only difference you're doing is you're reaching out to professors at different universities, specifically in the area of research you'd like. So let's say if you're interested in carbon nanotubes, you message someone who is doing carbon nanotube work and expect or try and form a relationship and be like, hey, I'm you know extremely interested in this field of research. Um, this is what I want to do my master's or PhD in. I'd love to get some research done um, and research like apprenticeship before. Um, taking on that master's degree or whatever it may be. Um, Hillary says, I'd like to work in a startup for my next internship. Um, how do I go about finding startup companies? LinkedIn, Google, look at Y Combinator. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Bartek. A um, bunch of things you can do. How do you best use Hackathon's conversations with recruiters at Hackathon's to eventually land an internship with a sponsor company? Um, you talk to them. Also, in, like imagine there's maybe a thousand people here. I'm not exactly sure of the number, but they're also trying to do the same. So in terms of standing out, you know, if you have worked with the tech stack before, which is similar, um, giving them your resume, these things are very important. Um, also, you know, again, be genuine. Yes, you are. It's a very transactional relationship, especially with recruiters, but how can you make that more personal? 
um, and how can you uh, reach out to them in a way where you're not only talking about internship, but you know, just talk about them as well and like what they enjoy. How do you important do you think a cover letter is? If you really, really want an internship at the company, it's like your top choice. I'd still recommend writing one, but I usually don't. Um, last question. What, how do you make the most out of an internship? Like what type of questions are you supposed to ask? What do you do when you seriously don't understand anything that's going on? I feel that. Um, I like the biggest thing I'd say is you ask your mentor, ask your manager, hey, I don't get what this is. What do I look at? And how do I like go about learning this? But I'd also say you should, um, you know, go about searching on Google first. Uh, make sure you've expended your resources before you go up to your manager because Let's say, let's say you want to learn about like C++, for example. Um, you don't know what a make file is. If you haven't Googled what a make file is, if you haven't gone on Stack Overflow yet, and you ask your ma manager before, like what the heck is a make file, before you've done these prerequisite things, your manager is not going to like you, right? But if you are doing the work, if you're looking into different resources, you know, you're trying to figure out, you can frame your question a lot better too. So maybe it's just like a portion of the make file you need help with. That being a targeted question is going to be a lot better rather than a very, very general one. Um, and with that, I believe I am done for today. I will stop sharing my screen. Um, so thank you, thank you all for joining me today. Um, I will be on the Discord right after. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. Have a great, great Hack the North. I am so excited to see what you all build. And it, I'm just super stoked. And every single one of you who attended, thank you for your time. Um, and have a great night.